Welcome to another successful episode of the Integrated Entrepreneur. I am here with my good friend Keith, and we're going to go over the difference between people who are successful and people who aren't. This is huge. Keith, what do you got? What's up, man? Dude, this one is good because I feel like a lot of times people get paralysis by analysis. And dude, if you ask anyone who has found success, it's just by doing and jumping in and figuring it the fuck out as you go. The people who are still having trouble or who haven't found the levels of success that they're after are typically those who are timid and decision-making and just getting out there and getting dirty. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, and it, dude, if to me, it's like, we look at all these people who we see ultra successful and they're up on the pedestal. They just went and did it. Like yeah. if you go back to their origin story, all of the indicators are there that they just did it. They figured yeah. it the fuck out the hard way. And none of them had that's, a that's story like, of where it was like, Oh, I decided to open up a, a vitamin than- shop, a supplement mm-hmm. store. And we did $14 million in year one. Like it was just the ground and pound of the daily, getting your teeth kicked in over and over and learning from those small mistakes of actually doing the fucking work that led them to be where they are today in the success world. And what I wanted to really share is like what I'm going through today, right? Today, not today isn't today, but today is in this past month and a half, two months. I decided that it was... I was tired of bullshitting myself and talking about how I was going to get involved in real estate and I wanted to to take action. And so I went out and found a pot of people who have been in the game for a long time and I figured out a way to get into the room. And within the last 30 days, we have made an offer and are now about to close on a $2 million, 10 acre Airbnb park. Had you asked me, do I know anything about this? I still will tell you no. I don't know shit about shit. I just know now how to ask people certain questions to get the answer that I need to be able to make that decision. Right. So by virtue of just getting into the right room, by virtue of asking a couple questions to figure a little bit of shit out. Mm -hmm. Now I've bought a $2 million piece of real estate with zero of my own dollars out of pocket. Had I not just jumped in head first, that shit would have never happened. Yeah. Right. And so that's the point. For those of you listening who are sitting on the sidelines waiting for the opportune time to get into the game, there is no open door that's going to be like, hey, Timmy, now's the perfect time to get your ass in and play. Yeah. You just got to go do it. So basically, successful people take aggressive action towards what they want to accomplish. And when they don't actually achieve what they want to accomplish, they sit back self-reflect, analyze, make adjustments, and do it all over again. Is that kind of what you're teaming up with? You're summing up here? Yeah, that's pretty much the softball lob for you to knock it out of the park. And it's, man, it's such an exciting fucking place to be too, right? It's the unknown territory. So guys who are looking to get in, like in real estate right now, I've heard all the time is like wholesaling (laughs) and novations, right? And fix and flips. Yeah. Those are the really trendy words to throw around. But the people who want to go do that aren't fucking doing it because they don't know where to start or they don't know who to talk to or they don't know that YouTube University. I don't know if you guys know this. That is a free fucking university. It does not cost yes. you 80K a year to get there. Right. You literally can sit on your ass at night and right pull there. up as much educational value videos as you want. Yeah. The problem is people really don't want the shit as bad as they say they do in their sphere of influence yeah. or they would be doing it. And, and all the people that I know who want something bad enough, figure out a way, whether it's self-study in YouTube or it's paying money to get into a mastermind or around a select group of people who are already doing the shit at the highest level or, and it doesn't even have to be the highest level. Just a little bit better than you is a room that you might want to get into. And so I'm a firm believer in that. And I know you are because we that's where we met in the mastermind. Yeah, it's true. And yeah, and I think dude, just getting into a place of just fucking decide to jump into the water. It's like when I go in a cold plunge every morning. It fucking sucks, dude. Yeah. Every day it sucks. It's never better. No. You just But it's the decision of just getting in there. And then once it's done. Yeah. There you go. And right? you're where are you at on this topic? 
So I'll give you my, this also involves real estate, but it's not meant to be all about real estate, right? So yeah. I learned the hard way doing three or four properties and they still worked out, but I did not optimize it. If I optimized it at the time I was had that type of cash and I was putting that to work for me, I'd probably be 10 times from where I'm at now. But getting those three properties and doing them wrong and still making it work made a lot of sense and taught me a lot of really good lessons along the way because I was in my early 20s when I did that. Fast forward to now, I have a partner and between the two of us, what we own together is probably about eight or nine different properties. And we actually just had one that we realized we bought it at a good price and we are selling it now for 200,000 more because it gave us headaches. And what we're doing is we realized, hey, this doesn't really fit the type of real estate we do. We always do multi value add multifamily properties. This one did not have enough rents to qualify. And what happened was there were payment issues from some of the tenants. We had to clear it out. We were actually able to sell the property. We bought it for three ninety. We're selling it for five ninety. Okay, or three eighty. Selling that it for is five ninety. <laughs> well, in three years, it's terrible. But what we are doing is we are actually rolling that money into a million dollar property that will bring in between twelve and thirteen thousand dollars a month because it's a legal for family okay and so yes we didn't get it right but we got it right enough on that one where we can pivot now sell the headache and get something that is way bigger that's going to produce way more cash flow this doesn't right. stop in real estate this happens everywhere so when i find something i want to do Okay, when you analyze successful people versus unsuccessful people, one, I commit to doing it and I try to get in a room with other people that are doing it or doing it better than I am. I want to learn from them. I'm not trying to compete with anybody. I am trying to learn. It's me versus me every fucking day. I'm trying to learn. And then I'm prob I probably, I'll be honest with you, I probably wouldn't be doing a $2 million transaction as my first transaction like you did. However, I am going to start doing whatever it is that's going to allow me to hit my goal. And then every so often, I'm going to take a step back and analyze if the steps that I'm taking are correct. And if they're not correct, what adjustments do I need to get there? But my point is the level of commitment that I have when I decide to do something, it is an all or nothing. And one other thing that I have learned is that when you commit to everything, you commit to nothing. When you say no to fringe opportunities that are really just distractions, what you're doing is saying yes to the one thing you really want the most. You're reconfirming, hey, this is what I want. This is how I'm going to go do it. I'm saying no to everything else around me until this is fucking done. That's, that's another, huge. yeah, that's another trap that people fall into. Right. Yeah. And then think about it. What other things can you do to get that goal? Are you fit enough? Are you reading? Are you doing all of these things? If I wanted to be the best real estate investor ever, all I would be doing is hanging out in real estate groups and I'd be reading every book I can get my hands on in real estate to come up with ideas. And then I'd be searching for properties. That's what yeah. I would do. And to do that, you need a certain level of commitment. Okay. Yeah. Dude, that piece there, I want to stop you because I think motherfucking people will overlook this part. Saying no is the most powerful fucking thing you can do. Mm -hmm. To your point, like, dude, this world is full of shit for us to get distracted by. Mm -hmm. Right? Weed now is legal fucking damn near everywhere. Yeah. Alcohol, parties, this, that, name it, right? It is made for us to be distracted for what the fuck we really want. And we can get on this conspiracy shit all day long, but the government, like this whole fucking solar eclipse shit today. You know who spent zero minutes thinking about that? Me. You know why? Because I don't give a shit. Because I got work to do. And I got shit and priorities. And seeing the moon and the sun mask each other is not fucking something I care about. All of these other fucking people on Facebook and shit, the world's going to end and the fucking paths that it crossed was an anarchy and this and that. Dude, there is so much fucking distraction in the world. Politics is a fucking distraction. This is, yeah. a, you got to shut all that shit down. And so to your point, saying no is healthy. Yes. It is 
It is something you should do. Mm-hmm. The other part of that is, which took me a long time, is I love to please people and help people. And, and saying no was something I had to learn in that space. That's not Otherwise, easy I would never fucking get ahead of where I wanted to be. Yeah. And so, dude, saying no and having and getting people to understand that is it, it is okay for yeah. them to do will tremendously free up their time to then refocus that. So that's two part. Saying no is part one. And then taking that time you saved or money you saved or whatever you saved by saying no and deploying it in the right space is number two. You can't just start saying no and expect shit to show up at your door. You still have to put the elbow grease into it and making sure that you're doing the no and then the work behind the no will get you closer to where you're trying to get to. And that's a, that's something that I just learned in the past couple of years was the no thing, which was super powerful. Yeah. And you have to realize most times you try something, you're going to fail. It's not going to work. But every single time you do that, you are finding a way that wasn't possible and getting closer to a way that is possible. And yeah. until you can view all the missteps as just that, as learning lessons that you keep, remember, file away and made adjustments on, you're never actually going to make the progress that you need because no one has ever had a smooth climb to the top. It, there's no such thing as a fucking elevator of success. Okay, you don't press one button and then all of a sudden you're up there. Okay, there's a lot of actions that you have to do. Think about it. If you had to go up a hundred floors, you know that elevator isn't working and you have to take a hundred floors worth of steps. What do those steps look like? Okay. That's literally the difference between you hitting your goal and being successful and you not. Now, are you going to hit every one of those steps on a hundred flights clean? No, you're probably going to stumble up a couple of them, especially if you're going fast. However, it's going to teach you where to step and where not to step when you're making that climb. And that's yeah. what this is about. It's about learning from your mistakes, continuing to move forward. Regard, it doesn't matter what anyone else says or does, what they post, okay? It's you being consistent. I will tell you right now that my I am hyper-focused on two things in terms of business and my financial health. I am focused on growing my team and growing my company and helping a ton of people grow their business And then personally, I take whatever is left over from that, what my career and my company provide me, and I take that money and I throw it into real estate. I never talk about the real estate because I still don't think I'm a fucking expert. And I've bought, I don't know, probably 14, 15 properties so far. Okay. And I've sold probably about six or seven of those. I don't think I'm an expert yet. Okay. But my focus is help as many people as I can with my company. And the byproduct of that is what I receive in compensation. And that compensation goes out to that. Other than that, I'm focused on my fitness, my friends, my family, and and my faith. And everything else helps and feeds into each other when you are that narrowly focused on what your goals are. And any type of distraction is something that you have to weed out right away. Yeah. And here's the thing. <clears throat> and this is where motherfuckers aggravate the shit out of me. They expect to spin up an LLC on a Monday and be rich by Thursday. Yes. Yeah, that shit doesn't work in the rank and file world that I live in, right? And you got to earn street cred. You got to build yourself up in the military. You don't just come in as a fucking four-star general, right? There's levels to this shit that people don't seem to quite understand. And going through the growth pains of business is not a Debbie Downer fucking deal. You should wear that shit on your sleeve as if you're creating rank. Yeah, it's part of your story. It's part of who you are. It's part of your story. It's part of your makeup. It's part of your genetics. It's part of your exit strategy. It's part of your generational wealth transfer. Like, you know who I fucking feel bad for? The motherfuckers who were born with the ability to go out and just do whatever they want at any expense and buy whatever buildings they want and mm-hmm. never have to really understand how to fucking make it work. Yep. That's what I feel bad for because they're taken from diaper to here's unlimited amount of money. Go, go fucking do what you want, Johnny. Yeah. 
and they don't have to fucking earn it in the trenches and in the in, in the hard way. They don't get to experience what we get to experience. So I'm like in a place now in business where the bad days are a great experience for me. Good. Get yeah. my ass kicked today. Good. I signed up for it. It's not one of those things like, hey, man, I'm going to go buy $20 million worth of real estate this week. And I don't give a fuck because I got plenty of money because daddy's trust is going to help me out. Yeah. Like, I feel bad for those fucking people. They're so detached from reality. And those are few and far between, I feel like. Yeah, I could maybe. Maybe at that level, sure. But there's yeah. also people who have successful businesses because they took it over from their parents and maybe they're not wealthy beyond belief, yeah. but they also didn't get to experience the pain and the suffering and the fucking the heartache. And dude, uh, all right, do we go eat tonight or do I go on a water fast? Which one is it? Yeah. Which one is it? Yeah. But it's those people, man, who are also the ones that are the loudest out there talking about, I've made it this far and I've done these things, but I got no notches in my belt to support what I've done. Yeah. And I don't say that to hate on them. I say that because I think these times where people really get their ass whipped in business are the times that mold the success that they're going to come into. Yeah. And that actually brings up a great point. One of the main differences between guys who are winning all the time and guys who aren't is their mindset. Okay. The mindset of a winner is, I don't want to say humble. It's confident and always open to learning more and obsessed with what they're doing. And whether that's good or bad, they still carry a positive attitude. Like in sales, if you have one thing that triggers you and that goes off early in the day, the rest of your calls are not going to go well until you get that mind shifts, mindset shift that you have an opportunity to be grateful for doing what you do. Okay. Right. You have the opportunity to learn. You have the opportunity to make money just because you have the opportunity to do something. doesn't mean it's entitled in, in like you're entitled to, it. you have to do whatever it is required to get it done. But the guys that are winning, look at everything as an opportunity to be grateful to learn, as an opportunity to be great, grateful to grow. And so as they go from mistake to mistake, their mindset is the same, okay? Now, that doesn't mean you always have to be positive. You're going to have things that trip you up. You're going to have setbacks. However, right. the difference between winners and losers is how long is that setback going to impact the winner? It's probably – couple minutes, maybe an hour max. Okay. Versus right. someone who is losing, that's going to impact them for days or weeks or months. And then you get some downward negative feedback loop where everything's going wrong. Why is everything going wrong? It starts with your mindset and your attitude. Okay. Yeah, you're being a little baby, baby Correct. bitch about Correct. things. Correct. <laughs> and guys, I will tell you this, the easiest way to figure out where someone's mindset is, is when shit goes wrong. Are they looking around and pointing finger after finger or are they owning what their portion of it was and then making the adjustments and the changes to go forward? So many people sit there and just wonder, why is this happening to me? Instead of thinking of it and having a positive mindset, pushing through and figuring it the fuck out. And when people right. point fingers... Okay, if they're saying it to you about somebody else, I guarantee you when you're not in that room, they're saying it to somebody else about you. And that's the shit that you don't need around you. That type of negativity, winners cut that out. Okay, winners take ownership. Winners consistently have that positive makeup and mindset that, hey, I'm going to get this done. It might not happen this second, but it's going to happen. What else you got on that, Keith? Nothing, man. I think it's, <clears throat> it's just the reality is this, like full circle, right? We got to embrace the shit, eat the shit sandwich. Everyone's going to do it but more than likely, unless you're part of that group of people who just happen to be lucky. Silver gold spoon type shit. The, yeah. the must be nicers. Yeah. yeah the, fuck those guys. But here's the thing. I really want people that are listening to this to understand, sit back, block the fucking noise out and reflect internally and appreciate where the fuck they are. What, where, if the, these words find you in like the midst of a bankruptcy or 
the midst of growing your business to unparalleled heights. It doesn't matter as long as you appreciate the fucking point where you're at. Stop trying to step over a dollar to pick up a shiny penny. Slow it, slow down and be encompassing where you're at. Take it in. Enjoy it because you won't fucking be there long. Right. And if you are there long, chances are look in the mirror because it's the reflection that's causing you to stay there. It's not the outside forces. It's yourself. Right. If I could do this all over again and go back 17, 18, 19 years to where I was first in business, I would have recorded so much more shit. I would have videoed so much more shit and just kept a, a scrapbook of where I've come from. So when I have a fucking day where I'm in my fucking feelings, I could open that shit up and be like, oh my God, what am I bitching about? I don't know what else to say. I think that's a walk off home run. Like just yeah. knowing that you've been uh, in 10, uh, 10 X worst state places. Like yeah. get off the soapbox and, and get to work. I'll, I'll give you two examples that helped me work for me. And then we're going to re- let you guys uh, share this with someone. Two things that have worked for me really well to look at how far you've come. One, keep an updated personal financial statement. Okay. That's your report card. If you're updating it monthly or quarterly, you have a lot of history to go off of. And you can see what trajectory your wealth has been growing at. Okay. And usually over time, it'll look very positive. That line is going up. Okay. That will always help reframe and reset where you're at and give you a level of appreciation with how far you've come. Okay. The other one is your business. Think about it. Two years ago, I had two employees and now I have 10. Two years ago, I did, let's say $70,000 a month in revenue. And now I'm doing 200,000. You, that's really easy to appreciate how far I've come in, in that time frame. Do things like that, and those on those bad days, like he said, those days you're in your feelings about it, all you have to do is pull that up, and it'll show you, and it'll be a reminder of who the fuck you are, what the fuck you built, and what you're capable of. All right? Now, I hope that helped you guys. Do me a favor. Share this with someone that needs to hear it. Go check out Capital Tools if you own a business. It'll change the game for you. And if you need help getting your wealth in order and getting – all your financial planning done with someone that actually knows how to do it, reach out to Keith. That's simple, guys. Appreciate you. We'll see you on the next one.